Now what we can do, and it's try to be a bit more quantitative, is to actually try to measure the effect, uh, to like you know come up with a number for the effect of public employment on total employment. And what we'll do to do that is to compute what we call a multiplier, which is a number of workers who end up with a job when one extra worker is hired in the public sector. And we'll study the properties of that multiplier a little bit. And because it's a multiplier, so there are multipliers for all types of government policies. Here, because the policy we're looking at is on public employment, we we'll look what we are going to study is a public employment multiplier. So what's the definition of the multiplier? Um, so it's the additional number of workers employed when one worker is hired in the public sector. Okay, um, and so we can formalize that uh, math mathematically so that public employment multiplier we always denote it lambda. Um, so we have lambda is equal to dL because L is employment divided by dG because G is public employment. So let's study the properties of our multiplier. So the approach we're going to take is that we're going to compute it analytically. So we'll find an expression for the multiplier, and then we'll go over the various properties of it. And we'll see that a lot of these properties, the intuition can be, uh, can be obtained from the labor market diagram that we've just seen. So we're going to formally establish these properties and then go back to the intuition uh, that we have. So uh, how do we compute that multiplier? So the key idea is that um, everything in the model is given by our uh, equilibrium condition. This equilibrium condition is going to tell us what is the tightness that equilibrates the market, so that the supply is equal um, to the demand. And um, so here's the equilibrium condition. It's going to look something like this. And the of theta equals ls of theta. So this is the equilibrium condition when uh, g is equal to zero. And then once g becomes bigger than zero, uh, it becomes some value positive, it, the equilibrium condition becomes Ld of theta plus g is equal to Ls of theta. Okay? Yeah. And clearly, you know, theta will have to adjust here uh, once we introduce uh, once we introduce g in the picture. Okay. Uh, so uh,
And so as you can see um, implicitly that equilibrium condition that we've just here, so it depends on theta, and theta is a parameter that shows up in that equation, and then it determines theta. So implicitly, tightness is a function, uh, theta is a function of g through the equilibrium condition, using you know, the implicit function theorem that we've mentioned before. Okay, so, um, so imagine that um, we need some equilibrium and we are going to increase public employment by dg, let's say positive. So that's uh, the experiment that we are considering. And, uh, so this is going to lead to a change in all the variables in equilibrium. So we have uh, employment aggregate employment you know, is going to change by some amount dl tightness is going to change by some amount d of theta. Uh, and so on and so forth. But the idea is that uh, once you do that, it's still true that your equilibrium in your condition remains valid before and, uh, and after the change. Okay? Uh, <coughs> okay, so uh, our goal here, the, the approach that we're going to take, uh, first we're going to compute d theta, the change in tightness that's uh, induced by the change in public employment. And from that, we're going to infer dl, and then of course the multiplier, which is just dl divided by dj. Okay, um, but first we're trying to see because you know theta, the tightness, is what's given by the equilibrium condition, so it would be the easiest thing to um, characterize. And then we're going to see uh, what happens, uh, you know, what happens to the tightness. Okay, so uh, so let's start from the equilibrium condition. So the equilibrium condition says that labor demand theta plus g is equal to the labor supply. So aggregate labor demand equal to the aggregate labor supply. And that's true before and that's true after uh, the change in DG. Okay, so if I call this the left hand side of the equation, and this is my right hand side, I know that the change D left hand side that's created by DG. So DG create a change D left hand side and a change d right hand side, right? So when I change my g, I'm going to change my left hand side and I'm going to change my right hand side of the equation, you know, because g changes and theta changes. But because this, the right hand side and the left hand side are equal before the change and they are equal after the change, it has to be that the two changes are exactly the same. Okay, so since Since the equilibrium condition is valid before and after the change dg, um, it has to be, you know, that d left hand side is equal to d right 
and side. Okay, uh, because you know the two equations are equal before they equal after, so they need to have changed by exactly the same amount. So d left hand side is equal to d right hand side. Okay, now what is d right hand d? So d right hand side is very easy to compute. The change in the right hand side. Well, you know, given that the right hand side is labor supply evaluated at theta, we know that it's going to be d ls. D theta, so the derivative of the labor supply with respect to theta times d theta. So very simple, very simple. Here. Okay. What about the change in the left hand side? Well, the left hand side it's composed of first the labor demand evaluated at theta. So the change in left hand side will be first the change in private employment, d labor demand theta d theta times d theta, plus of course the change dg. Okay. Great. So this is what it is. Uh, we have the left hand side and the right hand side, they both change. But we know that, as we've said, these two changes they have to be the same because the, the equation holds before and it holds after. So now if we equate these two things, we get that We have that d labor demand d theta times d theta plus dj is equal to d labor supply d theta times d theta. Okay, so now what I'm trying to compute, um, as I was saying, what I'm trying to compute here is a change in tightness uh, d theta. So I can combine things a little bit. I get we are looking for what d theta is, so I get d labor supply d theta minus d labor demand d theta times d theta is equal to dg. Okay, that's just by bringing the term d labor demand d theta uh, on the other side of where it was. Okay, then what I can do here is I can divide everything by dg. Um, the change in uh, government spending. So what do I get? Then I get that d labor supply d theta minus d labor demand d theta times d theta dg is equal to 1. Okay, great. Then I can uh, simplify things a little bit and I get that my change in tightness generated by the change in public employment is equal to 1 over d, sorry, d labor supply d theta minus d labor demand d theta. Okay, so that's very good progress indeed.